coming up on Texas Voices. Life spins like a high record. You're so good to bad to better. We head no, to Historic can't. Floors Country Store. We know what it's like to be traveling down in a van and uh, you're, you're playing for 200 bucks. We join the hard living nation. There's no hotel rooms and you're sleeping in the van, you're driving overnight. Like it's, you know, the music industry is tough. If you want in it, <laughs> you better be tough. And get an intimate look at the stories behind Randall King's new EP dedicated to his sister. It's time to put on your big girl boots yeah. and and figure this out. And a coffee collaboration made in Copeland Dance Hall Heaven. Meet Abby Road and her bootstrapper spirit, inspired by the great Tilly Devine. You have 16,000 square feet and you can't put a person in here, but what can you do? And if you have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps, make them Millers. We stop by a shop made by Blood, Sweat and Boots. If you don't love it, you're not gonna be good at it. Texas Voices highlights the musicians, artists, and creatives of our great state next. Howdy, and welcome to the iconic Dixie Chicken located in the historic Northgate District in College Station, Texas. I'm Lindsay Lipman. When life gives you lemons, it gives Randall King lyrics to pour his heart and soul into. The ultimate bootstrapper, the country singer, keeps trucking through life's difficulties, and his new EP, Leanna, named after his late sister, is a beautiful tribute. We sat down with Randall at the legendary Floors Country Store to hear the stories behind the songs. First tell me, playing a, a stage like this, especially when you look around the room um, and you see who's been there before, that's got to uh, be a vibe. That's got to feel oh, good. Yeah, no, Flores is iconic. It's, a, it's one of the oldest, historic, most historic places to play in Texas. And uh, there's been all, countless legends come through here. I mean, Willie Nelson, Robert O'Kane, all those guys. Yeah. Willie Joe Shaver. I mean, there's countless legends that have rolled through this. Uh, to this venue and we're excited to be here and eat some tamales and play some country music. One of the things I enjoy the most about your, your music is your writing. Your, it, it seems like you must love words. You're yeah. very clever um, and you don't waste yeah, a lot. That's line. the first time anybody's ever told me I was that smart. Really? <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> Maybe they don't want you to know yeah. you're smart. <laughs> you know, tell me about your process of writing. You know, specifically, it seems like in every song there's a couple of lines that are just, oh man. Like, yeah, you, you got to the heart of it. Well, thank you. Uh, honestly, we just try to keep it honest, keep it real. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a stickler when it comes to writing. I don't like uh, I don't like throwaway lines, just to throw a line yeah. in there to make it work. Ah, that'll, that'll do. I, I analyze and overanalyze probably every line that I write. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes it, it can be my downfall. Yeah. So just letting the song be what it is. But uh, you write that line and just try to make it the best you can make it. Now, uh, what was it like when you were writing with Garth Brooks. He sure has said some nice things about you. Man, Garth's incredible. Yeah. That's a, uh, for being the biggest superstar on the planet for mm -hmm. country music, uh, man, he's, he's probably the most humble person I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Overly humble. And uh, he just treated me, he treated me kind and well. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and wrote in the studio where he recorded everything he's ever recorded. Now, where did that work ethic come <clears throat> from? Um, you know, you're not taking any shortcuts. You're doing all the hard work day in and day out. Uh, you know, I come from a, a family of truck drivers and hay haulers, mm -hmm. uh, four generations deep. And uh, honestly, that attitude came from my came from my papa on my daddy's side. And uh, he woke up every day, went mm -hmm. to work, and uh, he he had the attitude of. Uh, you earn it by mm -hmm. working hard, and if you can't keep up, you're going to get left behind. You know, for me, it's all about, it's about, it's all about the grind, and it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. message of how we live. Mm -hmm. Like I said, man, it's a tough road. We've, we've been down the road where we slept in the van. Right. We had six guys sharing one hotel room. We slept on the floor. Mm -hmm. We ran with three hours of sleep, played the show, and then did it right. all over again, you know? I mean, right. we, we come up 
from a, a, a very tough side of it. Uh -huh. You go out in the Midwest with yeah. in, a, in a 12 passenger van mm -hmm. and you're doing everything that a, a, a 12 man crew would do with six or seven people. Yeah. And so for us, we earned that title. Mm -hmm. My fans have earned that title. And your new EP is just beautiful. There are Thank some you. songs in there that are really, Hey Moon is one of the most beautiful songs I think I've ever heard. Thank you. So tell me some of the stories behind the songs and, and also about your sister. It's titled after my sister, uh, my sister Leanna. Mm -hmm. And uh, we dedicated all four songs to her. We started out with a song called Take It As It Comes. Yeah. And I wrote that with Mark Nestler and Tony Martin, the guys that wrote Just To See You Smile and Living and Living Well. and. Uh, mm -hmm. That song is just, it's a, it's a very deep, meaningful song to me in the sense of I come from a background of depression, anxiety, uh, OCD, things I struggled with in high school. Uh, you know, even all the way to the struggles in my early career where I'm trying to get started and, and, and it, was, it was tough, man, but you just kept your head down and whatever life slung at you, you just uh, literally took it as it come and mm -hmm. keep trucking. And Hey Moon, it sounds like a song Really, I feel like I, it sounds like a song I could also sing to my daughter or somebody like that. Yeah. It's just very poetic. Uh, what's the story behind that song? I had a buddy that was going through some things with his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, for 60 days, legally, he wasn't allowed to see his little girl. They were mm -hmm. fighting for custody. And uh, it came out of left field, blindsided him. And he, it wasn't even one of those things where he got to say, you know, anything to his daughter, tell her what was going on. It just happened. Yeah. And so for 60 days, he was just completely stuck without her. And, and the mindset behind it, you know, it's not, it's not man versus woman, woman versus man. It's, you know, as a parent versus parent, you just don't mm -hmm. use your kid as a weapon against each other because you don't do anything but hurt the kid. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. hurt the other person, but you really hurt the kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sent that song as soon as I wrote it. I wrote that with Martin Nessler as well. And uh, I sent it to my sister. And mm -hmm. she loved it and it became her favorite song. Mm -hmm. So that one, that one got stuck on the EP for that reason. That was her favorite. That was her song to her little girl. Now, Leanna was your older sister. She was three years older than me. She's the middle sister. So did you ever have a nickname for her or did she just kind of look after you? Uh, Are y'all running buddies because of the age <laughs> is so close? Uh, we, were, we were always close. Mm -hmm. uh, she was definitely always looking out for me, keeping me out of trouble. Yeah. Uh, her nickname was Ani. And in the music video on Hey Moon, mm -hmm. the actress that uh, portrayed essentially Leanna was, uh, her name was Anna. Annika. Really? Uh-huh. So uh, she went by Ani. Mm -hmm. And uh, weird little coincidences like that kept happening the whole time we were filming. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was real special. Things, yeah. things just kept falling into place. We recorded four videos in uh, three days. Yeah. And all these little details just kept We'd have a plan and then it would go uh -huh. to hell and something would come, it would just come together last yeah. minute in, in just little ways that were just, you know, it was her. Yeah, a nod, a nod from her. That's really all I wanted to do out of it was just honor her in that way. Yeah. And it's really been a, a big healing process for me, you know, mm. after she passed in April. Mm. I hope that it's it's that for somebody else. It's my last shot in a I ride up in Nashville about one week out of the month, mm -hmm. and I'll take it up there and we start riding, but I mean, we're always working. Whether there's 10 people in the crowd or 10,000, mm -hmm. you treat it the same, and you wake, you walk up there with the same attitude, the same energy, yeah. you're performing for them. We've been able to make it work, and we aren't slowing down. You know, It's, mm -hmm. it's life, you gotta take every curveball thrown at you and, and keep trucking. We kick up our boots with Abbey Road. Randall has played her stage at Copeland Dance Hall countless nights, but it's creating the perfect cup of coffee that has the kindred spirits connecting on a savory new project. Follow your heart to Waco, Texas, home of the famous Magnolia Silos, Cameron Park Zoo, Baylor University, Dr. Pepper Museum, BSR Cable Park, and so much more. Enjoy the arts, historical sites, outdoor nature, entertainment, music, food, drinks, and events in a diverse welcoming place you'll find yourself coming back to again and again.
owns a honky tonk, an old brothel house, and a bar on Devil's Backbone. But it was Abbey Road's bootstrapping spirit that inspired this episode. I had never heard that term bootstrapper before until one night you were talking to me about it. And I just feel like you're a creative that has so many great ideas. Um, I mean, you could take a look around. You've made this place shine. So tell me what bootstrapping really means to you. It's my life. This is America. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And especially in the music world, yeah. musicians are bootstrappers, creative people, yeah, uh, survival skills. This isn't a job for Abbey Road. This is her life. You see such talent in people. You have a very good eye and ear for talent. Where does the joy and the spark come from from you when you're listening to somebody, maybe somebody who's not well known yet and you've got them on stage because you know that there's something in that person and in their music that people are going to connect with? It's the bootstrap that you see yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, and Randall King, he's a perfect example of that. I saw that ethic, that that mm -hmm. that you know, the fire burning inside of him. And, and you can't help but support that. Their coffee collaboration came in the middle of the pandemic when the dance hall doors were closed and Abby had to reinvent the wheel. It's time to put on your big girl boots yeah. and, and figure this out. You have 16,000 square feet and you can't put a person in here, but what, do you, what, what can you do? I was sitting upstairs one day, it was so hot, boiling hot, and the brothel mm -hmm. is really hot. If you've ever stayed here in the summer, you know it's hot up there. Um, and we had this fabulous oil painting of this madam, mm -hmm. and I dubbed her Tilly Devine. She, Tilly Devine was actually one of the most wealthiest and famous madams in the history of madams uh -huh. in the world. And she was from Australia. And she was the corker, and she, she defied everybody, and, and she just kept coming back, coming back, and coming back kind of flipping the universe off, you know? Yeah. And I was just sitting there and it was like she was really staring at me. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, like, what are you gonna yeah. do? Yeah. She yeah. was like, what, what, like, get your bootstraps, <laughs> like, pull, pull them up, yeah. like, let's go. Yeah. What, what are you gonna do mm -hmm. here? So I was like, we're gonna bottle the sauce. But for barbecue aficionados to sample the sauce, the idea was is that mm -hmm. I wanted this to be like a piece of steak in your pocket. So if you were sitting down to have a ribeye dinner at this dance hall, this would taste just like that ribeye. Yeah. She sent hand-sliced, smoke-cured meat, which became a savory success. You eat all you can and you sell the rest? You, you, have, like to you have to taste your own. One morning, she woke up with Randall King's smoking cigarettes on her mind, and another idea started to marinate. And he's like, man, it's just hard living right now, and I was like, Bam. That's it, dude. So he said, well, well, okay, man, like, like, let's do this. The Honky Tonk Blend was born, and Randall King's hard living coffee is filling up cups across the country. When he first started out, and it was right at the time that I bought Copeland, and nobody knew who Randall was then, mm -hmm. and so we were pushing hard to, to build a, a, a following for him here and we yeah. did and we worked really hard at it and we stayed the course and all during that time you know Randall would come in his warm-ups and his glasses and you know his nerdy little self uh -huh. and he would sit in the kitchen or come in the restaurant and um, and he would drink me dry out of coffee uh -huh. you know and we'd talk about life and business yeah. he works his work ethic is so hard it's so good it's so and he 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 earns everything that he gets yeah nothing is handed to that guy mm. i want to inspire and i want to be around people who inspire me yeah that's yeah. bootstrapping also it, surround yourself with people who are living life is good even with all of this craziness mm -hmm. i think we had to all step back and find um our realities again You can order the coffee, jerky, and sauce all at copelanddancehall.com. Now stay tuned for a special performance by Randall King, but first we stop by a custom boot shop in Fort Worth to watch an artist in action. People are choosing the Brazos Valley to launch, grow, and locate their companies every single day. But in the Brazos Valley, our most valuable asset is talent and their skills their drive, their character, speaks loudest.
Short, tall, alligator, ostrich. If you can dream it, Ramblin' Trails Custom Boots can make it. A chance meeting in a parking lot in El Paso put Clay Miller on a path to custom boot making. I actually went to help a friend for a few weeks in Sierra Blanca. Mm -hmm. And he was running a ranch out in Sierra Blanca. And there was a Spanish man that came up to me and him literally at the Home Depot parking lot. And we had been working cows and doing stuff. And he came up and he said, hey, y'all wear boots? And we're like, yeah. He said, well, come with us. So he took us back there to this little old shop in El Paso and they had all the knowledge and ability in the world they just didn't know how to go get no business the nephew was running around town looking for guys to build boots for he put 200,000 miles on his truck in four years blood uh, sweat and tears over yeah, those boots and a boot business built from scratch the only way I remember it is the Super Bowl was in Dallas and we had the dang ice storm uh-huh is the same weekend we moved in <laughs> to the shop in Great Cleveland timing. yeah <laughs> he concentrated on fit and function. When people come in and put it on mm -hmm. and they walk around and they're like, wow, you know, yeah. then they understand what we're talking about. But as far as describing it, um, until you feel it, I don't know that you can describe it. The made to measure boot, literally, if your foot's crooked, your boot's going to be crooked. U.S. tanneries hit a decline in the mid 2000s. So the leather comes from all over the world. It's like riding a bicycle. Once you do it enough, mm -hmm. your hands get a memory and yeah. And you, you'll learn. Every bootmaker in the shop at Ramblin' Trails can make them start to finish. About 30 man hours in every pair on average, 40 or more in production at a time. I ended up being air traffic control, just uh -huh. trying to keep everything rolling. <laughs> Craftsmanship is the cornerstone. You know, we've lost a lot of our older bootmakers in the last four or five years. A lot of them have passed. There's really not a lot of young kids getting into it because it takes so long to learn it. There is no school for it. Eight years ago, the boot shop moved to Fort Worth and Joe Martinez joined the bunch. I told him, just hang on. It's going to be a wild ride. In just six weeks, they opened the Western Collective next door when the National Finals Rodeo came back to Texas. And my whole idea is to have a year-round shopping experience that's mm -hmm. unique to nowhere else. Right right across from Will Rogers and Dickey's Arena. It's all things handmade, all things custom. And they took in more orders than ever. Because for every ranch hand, roughneck, or Dallas debutante who's forgotten how a boot's supposed to fit, Clay and the crew can bring that feeling back one boot at a time. If you don't love it, you're not going to be good at it. Welcome back to The Chicken. Now let's check in with Adam Drake for tonight's Dixie Chicken Stories. Howdy guys. I read and hear Dixie Chicken Stories every single day, and I've been very lucky to be part of quite a few myself. There's one that we're never going to forget here at the Dixie Chicken, and that was the night that our roof collapsed in late May 2020 in the midst of a pandemic. It had been raining and hailing hard all day with very strong winds. You know, it had just gotten so bad that our roof couldn't handle it anymore. As soon as our staff noticed, they did a great job of getting customers out of harm's way and thankfully had everyone out when it buckled for good. Trying as it was, there was one really big bright spot that came out of all of it, and that was the overwhelming love and support that was shown to us over the next couple of days and the months. Our online store got practically sold out overnight, and we had so many people here in the parking lot ready, seeing what they could do to help, and our first responders did an amazing job of making sure everyone was very safe. From the roofers and construction guys over at Jacotes to our student bonfire friends that came out and made sure we were open only three days later. So many people came in and gave of their time and talents that it was truly one of the most overwhelming things that we've ever experienced here at the Dixie Chicken. And believe it or not, the thing that we were asked most often on social media over the next couple of days afterwards was if Sneaky Snake was okay. Don't worry guys, Sneaky Snake was just fine in his habitat. Nothing happened to Sneaky Snake. Hearing and reading so many stories about what the Dixie Chicken means to people is one thing, but to actually see it in person, to see the overwhelming love and the response that we got when something tragic like that happened was truly something else and a story that we'll never forget. Thanks, Adam, and thanks for watching Texas Voices. Connect with us on social media and at TexasVoicesShow.com. Now let's hear a special performance from Randall King as he sings Around Forever from Florist Country Store. We'll see you next week. Soaking up cold beer 
Drinking with them boys back around here Like it's senior year But I ain't hit us yet Sipping back to catching touchdowns Big stars in a small town Some of us roll out Some of us will stick around forever Life spins like a haggard record You're so good to bad to better No, you can't get back The sand in your glass Got living like it's now and never Laughing about that time on spring break Sitting tipping on a rusted tailgate Yeah, the night's gonna end So we're taking it in while we're all together Ain't gonna be around forever My view's best when That sun kisses her skin Early morning light hidden just right On her side of the bed God gave me a best friend She's a neighbor, she's a blessing Best one he ever sent down He's been around forever Life spins like a haggard record Go from good to bad to better No, you can't get back The sand in your glass Got a lover like it's now and never Hold her tight and let her know I got her No matter what come hell or how on her Say all I need to say Make the most of every day that we get together Wanna keep her around forever Wanna keep her around forever Daddy used to throw me in the sky like I was Superman It's funny looking back now cause that's who I thought it was back then I didn't know he'd grow old and wouldn't be around forever Life spins like a haggard record You're so good to bad to better No, you can't get back The sand in your glass Gotta live it like it's now and never Ever lucky that we got love in life So don't hesitate to take time Make a call when you can Take every little chance to get together They won't be around forever They won't be around forever Thank you It's Starts somewhere Somewhere <laughs> South America And it tastes good you had to call your English teacher because she had misspelled. Know, Abby had misspelled. <laughs> Put the poster me after the end. Yeah, I was like, my last it's name good. isn't possessive. But it's all right. It's You're all, like, I just, there. I just write for a she living. Gonna, I know. Yeah, she's gonna, she gonna fix the next label. And voices, Copeland Dance Hall and restaurant. And jerky and, and jerky and coffee <laughs> and sauces and. Okay, just clap. <laughs> I am gonna mention the smoking cigarettes song she was like could you just get him to maybe play it a little bit so uh sorry abby got to promote new music if you would oblige <laughs> lucky enough to be quiet god hey clark can i get a beer <laughs> no, you need a shot. they will never forget nailed it there we go that was good yeah now seven 17 takes that's all it took <laughs>